So there's been uh, talks of the Diablo 4 expansion being a hundred dollars. It's a lot of money. I can admit when I'm wrong, albeit it doesn't happen all that often, but when it does, mm -hmm. I can admit that I'm wrong. Okay. I'll give you guys an example. About a year ago, one of the third or fourth videos I ever made on this channel yeah. was called Diablo 4 Isn't What You Think It Is. Okay. Got over 250,000 views. It's a lot of views. It was one of the fastest videos I'd ever seen pop off on my channel. And for anybody that's watching this that has a YouTube channel, they know how crazy it is for the third or fourth video of yours to get, get that many views mil. Yeah, that that's quickly. a lot. It's insane. And in that video, I simped for Diablo 4. I said things like, guys, don't worry about it. The cash shop is just there to fund the further development of the game so it can be even better over time. Look, we all have our moments of weakness. I, I mean, to be fair, like the cash shop, like, am I crazy in thinking that the cash shop isn't even in the top 10 problems for Diablo 4? Yeah, like, you took the, if you took the cash shop out of the game, if Diablo 4 announced... We're taking the shop out of the game. I would be like, cool. And that'd be about it. Mine. Who cares? So I was really surprised to see that when I put out my last video about <laughs> how Diablo 4 right. and expansion for the game wouldn't be worth $100. Yeah. I wasn't expecting such an outcry from people that, well, while many did agree <laughs> with me, there were a lot that didn't. Many even called me a liar. Ooh. So... Today, what I want to do is I actually want to oh. focus in on some of those discussions because I think it's worth having. Because I may not change the hearts and minds of everybody, but if I can change the hearts and minds of a few, well, then maybe we can get better it's a job games well as a done in years to come. So yeah, I used to we're think going that. to listen to the people that disagree with me today. Uh oh. And we're going to see if they can change my mind. Spoiler: They can't. A common complaint that I saw is how unfair and disingenuous it was for me to compare Diablo 4 to Path of Exile, as Path of Exile has had 10 years of content to improve upon itself and continue to add things over time where Diablo 4 has only been out for less than a year. And from their perspective, this is true. Path of Exile has had over 30 leagues, each bringing new items, systems, content expansions, bosses, monsters, and various improvements to the game over the span of its 10-year reign. Some leagues are more successful than others. Some content is... Well, here's an immediate fucking argument against that. Look at Diablo 3. How many fucking seasons did that game have? It had more seasons than PoE did, I'll tell you that. And where the fuck did those go? Did the game look like PoE at the end of it? No, it didn't. There it is. Kept for the long haul and other content is removed because players just didn't Toxic enjoy Toxic rain. 10 years is a long time to improve the system. Arrows? Engage Jesus. with players and implement the feedback and data that you've learned into the development of the game. While Path of Exile isn't a game for everyone, it is THE game for the players that enjoy yeah, it sure. because of how well Path of Exile has handled its God continued ass. development and its monetization. Sure, so yes, true. this complaint is actually true. They are right. I am wrong in this from a very narrow perspective. A less than a year old Diablo 4 versus a 10 year old Path of Exile is an unfair comparison in a world without context. But we don't live true, in a world without true, context. True, and in this matter, true. context is king. The Diablo series spawned the loot-driven subgenre within ARPGs, mm -hmm. aspiring numerous That's titles cool. to emulate its formula, including Path of Exile. The yep. game's focus on character progression, loot collection, and real-time combat had become a standard in the genre. Diablo was released almost three decades ago in 1996, captivating players with its immersive storytelling, randomized dungeon layouts, and loot-driven game. There's also the reality of a lot of these people that didn't actually play PoE in 2012 and 2013, and they don't remember what the game was like. Let me tell you, that Path of Exile in closed beta had more complexity than Diablo 4 does right now. There was more depth to it because I was there. I played when Piety was the final boss. I played when the Vol Oversoul was the final boss. Okay? Like you would do the Vol Oversoul, you'd reset back at the beach, you'd do that four times, and then you'd die in maps. Play. Diablo 2, released in 2000, mm -hmm. expanded upon its predecessor's formula, offering more complex character People customization, a larger world, and an enhanced storyline. Yep. Diablo 2 is often credited with defining the modern ARPG genre. 
introducing yeah. elements like skill trees and a robust multiplayer experience. Absolutely. Then we have Diablo 3 in 2012 and Diablo 4 in 2023. Mm -hmm. Almost three decades of games, three decades of iterations, opportunities for improvement, innovation, and expansion. On the other hand, we have Path of Exile, which is Grinding Gear Games' first game. The company was founded in 2006. Blizzard Entertainment has been making games and expansions since 1994. We could go even further back, if you'd like, to its days as Silicon and Synapse, and we have an over 30-year-old game studio. Heck, even if we just look at the development cycle for oh, Diablo 4, over 10 years since the release of Diablo 3, Blizzard has had every opportunity to improve upon its initial formula and mm -hmm. steal some of the best parts from its competitors' games. So now with context, I propose this question. What do we have for now almost 30 years of Diablo for a 10 year development cycle for Diablo 4? We got a decent feeling RPG that looked really good. Well, I don't know why you're talking about Diablo 4. Like past performance is an indicator for future performance. It absolutely is. If Diablo 3, you can assume that the way that they handled Diablo 3 will be similar to the way that they're handling Diablo 4. And if you look at the way that they've handled Diablo 3, did they make the game like PoE and more complex and have more interesting content as much as PoE did? No. Absolutely not. So why would you possibly use Diablo 4 as the foundation whenever you have a one-to-one -one comparison? And also, look at the bosses in PoE 2 beta. If you compare... Okay, so then, all right, well, the game isn't compared... Uh, to like, oh, you can't compare to PoE. PoE's been out 10 years. Well, then what about PoE 2 that isn't even out at all, and it has more bosses than Diablo 4? What about that? Do you see how this is such a dumb fucking argument? It doesn't make sense on any level. It had awesome looking cutscenes. Story was pretty decent. No loot filters. Mm -hmm. Brain dead boss design. Boring loot no end game variety, and a now deserted open world MMO light. Is it wrong of me to expect more of a $70 billion studio? I Is think it... yes. That That's one point I do agree with. I think yes. It doesn't matter how much money you put into a game. If it's going to be garbage, it's going to be garbage. Money will not solve that problem. Wrong of me to expect more, or is it unfair of me to compare when the studio we're talking about is the grandfather of the genre itself? No, it's not. It's not unfair to compare Path of Exile to Diablo 4. Mm -hmm. And that's not me saying that Diablo 4 needs to be like Path of Exile. It shouldn't It's far be. from that. Yeah. I realize that Diablo 4 is a game that's supposed to appeal to a much wider audience. Dads. A much more casual Three audience. Three jobs. Five of wives. Exile. But Nine without kids. that complexity and depth, that doesn't mean that Diablo 4 needed to be a game that lacked any innovation, imagination, <laughs> or improvement. But... That's exactly what we got. Yes. That's the reason why I'm upset and many other players are upset too is because it should still be more than what it is. Sure. That's not to say that the game won't get better over time, but that still doesn't justify us spending... And they have been improving Diablo 4. The game has gotten better and I'm happy about that. I'll tell you that. I I'm happy. Like, they are improving it. More money. This is good. Until they get that game to what it should be. And it still lacks that something that wants to make you keep coming back to it. Another common complaint that I saw is that I said nothing about Diablo 4 and how it's improved since Season 2. Now, in the video, I did mention that... I think that it's worthwhile noting that something is improved, but it's also worthwhile noting on the foundation in which approval occurs. It occurs on the foundation of there needing to be improvement. The fact is that the game was problematic on launch, and while it is admirable to improve and fix the game, it would be more admirable for the game to be good on release. Baldur's Gate 3 was good on release. Elden Ring was good on release. Are there things they changed? Yes, absolutely. But the inadequacies of Elden Ring and the inadequacies of something like Diablo 4 are on a completely different spectrum. This is just not true. Some improvements have been made to the game, especially in the Season of Blood. However, the uptick in player engagement was relatively negligible. So let's go ahead and mm -hmm. look at those improvements. New players can now skip the campaign and jump right into Season 2. Previously, players had to complete the campaign at least once to even join into a seasonal realm. All Renown now carries over to new characters and seasons. Previously, we still had to go out and do Renown activities. I can't believe they did the thing they should have done. 
build that stuff back up and get some of those character buffs and extra skill points. Gems no longer take up inventory space and low tier loot is automatically salvaged, freeing up inventory space and easing some of the pains of lack of storage. Mm -hmm. New bosses have been added to the game throughout the seasons. Target farming uniques has been added to the game, giving players the opportunity to potentially find some build defining items that were yep. previously randomly found and couldn't be found just about anywhere. And they also- And these are also good things. Proved XP gains by up to 40%. All of now, these things are good. Now, while I think these are, are great improvements, I yes. want to communicate my frustration that many of this stuff wasn't in Diablo 4 when it first released. Exactly. People are asking for Renown to be account-wide before the first season came out. People said, please don't make us do this. And Blizzard said, no. You will do it. And it was bad. And you know what else is really bad about it? Is the fact that I never even looked through a lot of the side quests in the game. And I bet I would have enjoyed, like, watching a few of them and, and doing a few of them uh, for, like, the lore. But because there was a goal behind it, all I wanted to do was complete my goal. And so I didn't even try to learn the side quest content. And on top of that, many of the innovations that we've seen across the genre over the course of Diablo 3's release yeah. up until Diablo 4, we still don't see any of that. Crafting, trading, interesting itemization, cross-class builds and subclasses. At launch, Diablo 4 didn't even have boss-specific non-cosmetic chase items. All loot, mm -hmm. any loot, could be obtained anywhere. There was no reason to even fight bosses in the first place, other than to just progress the story or go for achievement. Sure. A company with as many resources and experience as Blizzard couldn't effectively make interesting oh, cool boss designs, blending colors with attacks to make the environment where you couldn't even know what This is the designs. combat. This blending is... colors experience as Blizzard couldn't effectively make interesting... You guys see that? Yeah, I didn't see that. Make interesting boss designs, blending oh. colors with attacks to make the environment oh. where you couldn't even know what you were being hit by. You ended up just getting filtered by fault. their art. So yeah. yes, Diablo 4 has definitely improved over time. Massively so. And I realize that there's people that want me to recognize that because they enjoy Diablo 4 as it is right now and they're looking forward to the future of the game. Good for them. They don't want me to just gloss over the fact that they have updated and fixed things over the course of the game. And also, like, there's a certain amount of, like, like with, with Uber Lilith, too, this is another thing. Why do you allow people to walk outside of the edge of the room if walking outside into the edge of a room instantly kills you? Because having click to move is it's really frustrating because the character's hitbox isn't where you think it would be. It just sucks. Because fuck you, yeah. What what the it just it just sucks. It it it's just an unfun, frustrating way to play the game. Like why make that hard? So you die? Why not just make it to where you can't go out there? You just at least go to the edge. Why, why make it to where, like, if you accidentally click too far over, you just die? It just seems like it sucks. Like, I, I, I don't know what to say. It just sucks. Launch. However, the thing is, is that many of those improvements are... Like, Valton doesn't do that. You can't walk off the edge on Valton. Brian King? Why is it that people love to make examples of things that they don't understand? What's wrong with you? Like, why do you, why do you make, it, it, it's nothing like that. Everything about it is different. And also the Brian King boss is fucking annoying. And improvements that have existed in the industry since the development of Diablo mm -hmm. 4. So none of that justifies me or many other people spending 50 to hundred dollars on an expansion for the game. Yeah. It doesn't even meet, it doesn't even, justify me spending money on any expansion regardless of whatever the price is and i think this is a common issue that we see in gaming a lot gamers every time that the studios start doing something that we want them to start listening to us even just for a minute we start opening our wallets back up and then the minute we do the problems start all over again nope our reward to them for doing the right things is by us playing their game because if we're playing their game, it's popular. If it's True. popular, there's more people that are buying it. There's more people that are probably interacting with their microtransaction systems and all of that other stuff. We don't need to spend money for them to improve games. And that's something that we've been doing for far too long, and it needs to stop. Now, the last thing that I want to tackle are that. sentiments that were shared by both Riker Absolutely. and Asmongold. And this has to do with the complexity and depth of Diablo 4 and how it doesn't really need to position itself as a competitor 
because it doesn't have the same target audience. Diablo 4 is meant to be a more casual game than PoE. Mm-hmm. And the way that I worded my arguments about that, well, kind of left me open to this, so I want to clarify. Path of Exile is far too complex and complicated for the layman and honestly, even veterans of the genre. Let me just explain this. So basically, this is the Temple of Atzalotl. Uh, This was added in a league called Incursion League. Incursion came out in somewhere around 2016, 2017. You have to go inside of this different area, and then inside of this area, you have the halls, and inside of the halls, there are different doors that you can open, and based off of which door that's red that you can open, the green ones are already open. As you can see, the halls connects to the cloister and also to the entrance, as you can see right there, but it does not connect to the antechamber, the splinter research lab, the poison garden, or the storage room. So then you have to go inside of these, and the amount of uh, links that each of these rooms have empowers the rewards that you will get whenever you go inside of it. So, for example, if you go to, I think it's the Shrine of Empowerment. No, it's the uh, fucking the Splinter Research Lab. I think if you have that at level three, you automatically get certain rewards. If you have the, you know, the Corruption one at level three, you automatically get a double corrupting, uh, corruption thing. And then you have to go inside of here and then kill the NPCs inside of here. Also, the Architect that you kill, I think, has uh, a factor as well. Because, yeah, yeah, right here. Kill to change the Sacrificial Chamber or kill to change the Corruption Chamber. So you have to know exactly what chamber you want to change and how you want to change it and then alter your Temple of Atzawadl to make sure that all of the rooms are open. But actually, you don't have to do that because if you open up the Explosives Room, then the Explosive Room allows you to actually have access to a room that you didn't have open in the previous time by using a bomb. But if you multiply the uh, amounts of openings for the Explosive Room, you also get more Explosives, which allow you to open up more rooms that you didn't previously have and then of course you go into the apex of Atzawadl which is actually a separate specific boss that you have to fight that consists of two phases where there's like an add intermission in the middle it's a relatively easy boss to do but it can be complex and there's also a secondary thing that can happen another boss if I remember correctly you can actually summon at Ziri inside of at Ziri is an endgame boss like Uber Lilith inside of the temple of Atzawadl if you fully empower a certain room and so, yeah, th- th- so that that's the way this works. That's the level of complexity the game has. And I probably missed a few things, too. Each of these rooms have different things, and they upgrade to different things as well. I just recently started playing the game in earnest with its There's last season. There's about 20 season, of those. And while I've enjoyed myself, I cannot play the game without having done significant research and having max roll opened up on my other monitor the game has so many separate end game systems that you genuinely cannot Mm -hmm. tell at first glance which is going to be the most rewarding or even enjoyable to engage with the game feels like it has countless ways to level gear and progress through the game and some of the most complex skill and talent systems that i don't think i've seen anywhere else path of exile isn't just a learning curve it's a learning mountain that once you get to the top, somebody just pushes you off. No, it's another mountain, and then it's like you get to the mountain, and you're, and then they're like, all right, well, now you have to go to the moon. And then after you get to the moon, okay, well, now you have to go to Jupiter. All right, now that's good. Now you have to go to another solar system. <laughs> that's it. When I brought up the value proposition between Diablo 4 and Path of Exile, yeah. what I was trying to really show off was the well, comparing and contrasting of meaningful progression. Mm-hmm. Diablo 4 lacks it completely. Yeah. Personally, this is my opinion, but when I look at Diablo 4, I see Nightmare Dungeons basically being the exact same thing as Greater Rifts. I look at the Tree of Nightmare Dungeons are better than Greater Rifts, but that's not a fun comparison. Whispers is basically just a it's my opinion. reimagined version of the adventure mode. And the open world lacks really any thoughtful design whatsoever. Mm -hmm. At least in Path of Exile, with all the different systems that it has, there's meaningful ways to progress your character. Whether that's through the labyrinth being able to access a more specialized tree of skills and abilities and things that you can use later. Which, to be fair to Diablo 4, the Ascendancy... uh, class or the ascendancies were not added until 2014 or 15 it was not on release or ascendancy the game did not release some of the other end game systems that 
have specific items that you can only get from Is doing those activities. There's something to that that makes you want to keep coming back to it, that makes you want to learn more about it. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing to learn in Diablo. It's just go kill stuff. Yeah. Hopefully you get a higher number. Okay, Big number. You got higher number. Good job. Good boy. Maybe you can get another higher now. number. There's just nothing to it. And yeah. while I realize that this game is supposed to be for a much more simpler audience, people that aren't looking for something ultra complex, that doesn't mean it shouldn't have meaning. And for me, Diablo 4 doesn't have meaning. Simpler audience. All in all, I expect more from the company that created the job. Oh my god. From the company that made the game that inspired all of its competition. With nah, I, I'm fine with the level of complexity, but the boss design is inexcusable. The boss design is just, it's not... It's just awful. Like, that's it. Like, I, I mean, fuck the complexity of the game. Like, what about the bosses? Some odd over 9,000 people that worked on the game Ooga over Ooga its creation, yeah. as well as all the money that they invested. I would expect an improvement over previous iterations and innovations within the genre. So when that same company is coming at me asking for 50 to to $100 for an expansion of a game that didn't meet mine or many other players' expectations, that still has a long ways to go to improve, I mean, we still don't even have stash tabs. Loot filters don't exist. The overworld endgame... Yeah, why don't we have loot filters? That's crazy. ...still lacks really any meaningful purpose. Personally, I feel that loot and builds need to be a little bit more interesting, and the game still lacks that something intangible that really wants to drive you to play it. Now again, they definitely have improved the game since Season 2. They have. Season 3 can take it even further. But I hope regardless so. Regardless of the improvements that they make in a year, for me personally, and I would hope for many others, that's not enough for me to justify buying the game all over again. Am I to believe? I think some people, I, I do think that there is an army of people who found out about this game through a commercial on television who will buy the expansion. Absolutely. Without a doubt. I believe that in tandem when developing Diablo 4. These, they are, have these are the guys that are playing, uh, like last weekend, they played Starfield. Developed a second Diablo 4 to layer over on top of it. Or they developed a second Diablo yep. 4 in less time than it took them to make the base game. These are MMO expansion prices or higher. And for me... A that's $70 game, that's a premium AAA game. Way too much, too early, for too little work. Mm -hmm. But that's just for me. And it could be different for you. And what I say in these videos are just my view of what I think about the game and what I think about the industry. Yeah. That doesn't necessarily mean that that is your opinion or it needs to be everybody else's. But I do hope that having discussions like these do help people try to make smarter purchasing decisions in the future. Be a little bit more patient. Hold out a little bit longer because we're going to get better games as a result. Opening our wallets to that much money so quickly doesn't make a lot of sense to me. That's I think a good example of this is with WoW. Like wow, they stopped improving. Uh, they stopped improving the game, and people actually stopped playing in Shadowlands. They actually, they actually quit the fucking game, and Blizzard made the game better. They did. They made the game better. Imagine that. The whole reason I made the video in the first place. Not saying that the game is doomed. Not. And by the way, just for context, guys, uh, Dragon's Dogma right now is on sale. It's like four dollars. Just for context. The game has no chance at all oh, okay. for survival. Now it's like Though five. it does look relatively bleak. If you watch any of the trailers for Path of Exile 2, you cannot tell me mm -hmm. that that game doesn't look like a massive innovation over the genre. It looks incredible. Look, I started this channel mostly about Diablo 4. I get a vibe from PoE 2, like it's almost a uh, isometric remnant 2. Maybe it's just because of the uh, the world in the game, but like that's kind of like my vibe that I get with it. Four. And I pivoted away from that mostly because I didn't like the game. And I just don't like making a ton of content about games that I'm not enjoying. Yeah. And I'm not going to continue to pretend like I do or whatever else just to get views or something like that. A lot of people do no. that. 
the idea is for me to be as genuine as I possibly can with these discussions, with these videos that I make, and that's what I'm doing right now. So I realize that there's people that are out there that want me to look at the game in a different light. And I realize- I, w I love whenever people pull up arguments. I love arguing. I do. And you guys know that. I will sit there and I will argue with people and I'll talk about their point. Oh yeah, I love it. And so anytime that somebody else brings up like chatter commenters, like it, it's always like, and, and the thing is that most of the people that provide these arguments are, uh, they don't know what they're talking about. It's like the guy that said, what do you mean, Uber Lilith, you can't walk out the room? Uh, can't you do that with the Brian King? So, <laughs> a little hypocritical, ain't you? They're so stupid, ain't they? They're just so fucking stupid. Isn't it sad? Isn't it fucking sad? Fanboys that are going to be fervent and zealous in every take that they can have, but this is mine. Mm -hmm. So... I respect yours, you respect mine. Or True neither breakfast? of us respect no. one another what if because I did? it's the internet, so... Whatever. But, anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, mm -hmm. Big shout out and thanks to Asmongold, Riker, and also Darth Microtransactions for uh, uh, checking out the video and watching it on their streams. Really cool, really appreciate it. I got a bunch of comments and sentiments about people that were like super against folks reacting to people's content i'm just gonna say it right here so anybody knows i love it it's great for a smaller channel it's awesome exposure. i love how people there's always you know like it's that meme where like it's the couple in bed and it says i consent and then the other person's saying i consent and then there's some rent it's like god saying i don't i feel like that's a, like a lot of chatters like people always have like a, a perspective that they want a streamer to have oh my god sure and these are also guys that I've watched for years now. Uh, Asmongold, I, I honestly don't even know how long I've been watching him for. It's far too long. So anytime right, I get another to see reminder that their I'm takes old. and their opinions, you know, contrasting yeah. with my own, it's awesome because it gives me the opportunity to maybe sometimes sit back and think about the way that I'm thinking about things. Maybe approach my content in a different way. And mm -hmm. I always appreciate that kind of feedback. And I also appreciate their communities because <laughs> I'm a part of them. So, there it is. yeah. Thanks for watching. What a nice guy. Stay cool, stay righteous, stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next video. There it is. Yep, so, the one 20s. more thing before you go. 34 demo? We just yep. hit 30,000 subscribers Holy on this shit. channel. In the Congrats. first year of it being up. That is crazy. You guys That's are crazy. That's really good. Thank you guys for everything. And That's going to be like two, two years. I cannot wait to make videos in 2024. You guys rock. Yeah, that's all. That's all I got. All right, <laughs> there bye. it is. Wow, yeah, I mean, I'll link you all the video. I, I, I think that, again, like, the arguments that people have are always i'll link guys video make sure you give it a like this this guy's great i i have to tell you guys though it is fucking hilarious to me if anybody ever wants somebody like you want to know like all the different ways like some fucking argument somebody makes is stupid especially with these games let me know and i i will explain every single way that they're fucking wrong that's it. Monster Hunter time? Yeah, yeah. We're about to play Monster Hunter again. I'll link you guys the video again. Make sure to give it a like. Uh, you legendary drops. We've been watching these videos for quite a while, and uh, I think they're quite good. Uh, I have to say also, like, obviously people are going to buy the new Diablo 4 expansion, but, uh, you know, not P I mean, I'm not saying, like, you will or I will. I'm just saying I think that they we will have a lot of sales. Uh, but, you know, it's just not going to be the same thing, right? I'll say $100 and take it back to 50 but it was always going to be $50? A $50 expansion is totally fine. Am I crazy? I think a $50 expansion is, is okay. If it's adding in new story content, like a, a WoW level expansion, yeah, I think it's totally okay. $50, what about 60? 60 is a bit much, but I think 40 to 50 for an expansion is okay, and 60 to 70 for a game is okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I'd be okay with. $30 max. Yeah, I think that these these prices are just outdated. The truth is that inflation, man, like shit's expensive now. Like expansions were forty dollars like fifteen, twenty years ago. Like it can't you can't have those same prices today. Come on. Let's be realistic, man.